Biotechnology is revolutionizing every aspect of our lives. And one of the biggest advancements has been the ability to alter the genetic code. But when people think about genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, they usually just imagine big business that's altered the food that we eat. But the reality is there are so many new applications that exist today. These white skirt tetras are nothing new to the pet trade, but now they're packing something a little bit extra. Back in 1999, scientists at the National University of Singapore were working with a gene that encodes for the green fluorescent protein, also known as GFP. They were able to insert this into the genome of their fish, giving them the ability to fluorescently glow. Then in 2003, a company called Yorktown Technologies licensed these glowfish and brought them to the US market, making it the first commercially available genetically modified pet. Although genetic modification is a recent controversial topic, humans have been doing it for a very long time. Through methods like selective breeding and radiation, we've been tinkering with the genetics of the organisms around us for centuries. Take the goldfish, for example. Its ancestor is this drab-looking species of carp. But through genetic modification, we've changed it. It's brightly colored, and this one actually has a split double tail. But it's not just pets that humans have been tinkering with. We went up to San Francisco to visit a biotechnology company that's trying to change the way you look at household plants. Taxa is a biotechnology company that strives to democratize genetic engineering by making it as easy and accessible as computer coding is today. They're working on a range of products, from glowing plants to fragrant mosses, and even a kit that enables you to genetically modify your very own plant. We genetically engineer plants for home-based applications. Uh, we're most well known for a glow-in-the-dark plant. Nature's created these amazing biological building blocks and tools. Um, and DNA sequencing is the technology that allows scientists to really understand what those tools are. Um, it's, it's far and away the, the most exponential technology we've ever had. And all the amazing advances that have gone on in DNA synthesis, DNA sequencing, and, and ro the robotic tools to manipulate that, you put that together, we, we realize there's really an opportunity to redefine a lot of the products we have in our home to be so much more cleaner and greener. Um, and, and that's really what our long-term vision is. These amazing advancements are just the tip of the iceberg. And the obvious question becomes, will we modify ourselves? People today are very afraid of this, because they say, well, you're going to modify my genes and, and I'm going to have offspring that are going to be strange creatures. That's not true. You know, we all have genetic problems. And ultimately, we have to start thinking about, do we want to create a human being that lacks a whole range of things or has a whole range of capabilities. Uh, we understand some genes well enough today to make small modifications that would make real differences. And, you know, a, a century, it's not a long time. I've lived almost a century. But a century of scientific progress, given the rates of things are moving now, is enormous. Regardless of your stance on genetic engineering, the reality is it's nothing more than a tool. And like any tool, it's how we choose to use it. But that decision shouldn't be based on fear or lack of understanding. Genetic modification could be the answer to global issues such as hunger and disease. And personally, I'm excited about what this amazing technology holds for our future and how it could impact our daily lives.